In any manhunt, the person being hunted has the advantage for a while. But at some point, skills and experience and resources, well, that starts to favor the hunter. And that brings me to my next guest, Chris Swecker. He headed up the FBI manhunt for the Olympic Park bomber Eric Rudolph and has a pretty good idea of what Brian Laundrie is up against. Chris, you are just perfect for this, given the fact that Brian Laundrie's sister says he is, quote, a mediocre survivalist. I wanted to get your thoughts on this, these points coming together on the possibility he's on the Appalachian Trail. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's possible. I, I know the uh, parts of the trail. I'm, I'm from North Carolina. I ran the uh, FBI office here for five years. We've had fugitive hunts up there. Uh, it, it is a fairly well-traveled trail. And I, you know, I, I, I believe he will come across people if he is in fact on the trail. But I've heard from the, at least from the news reports here in North Carolina, that the sheriffs are, have run down these leads they think it's possible, but they haven't done it. They haven't found anything that, that corroborates that he is, in fact, on the trail. But, however, I will, comp in, in comparing him to Eric Rudolph, uh, as, you, as you pointed out, people go where they're familiar. Well, if he's familiar with the trail, then you certainly can't discount that. That's what Eric Rudolph did for five years. He never left the area. So it's very logical. And I think there has, uh, the North Carolina office of the FBI is concentrating on this. But I, I'd like to see more verification, more corroboration. I mean, it's fascinating that you, you yourself say that people like Rudolph stay where they, they stay, they stay where they know, you know, what's what. And there were the parents today telling Dr. Phil he knows that trail like the back of his hand. There's his sister saying, yeah, he goes up there four days at a time all the time, real comfortable there, but again, mediocre at best. I want to show our viewers, apart from these beautiful images of, of the, the trail, I want to show our viewers some of the tattoos that Brian Laundry has because you know you can cover up your face and you can grow your hair but you can't cover up tattoos especially when they're on your hands you eventually you got to take a glove off if you have it he's got those tattoos of leaves on his finger and then on the side of his hand you can see on the left hand uh, side of that picture uh, there's a sort of a small mountain range tattooed on the side of his hand. This has got to be helpful if, if people are going hiking on the trail. They should know about this and they should just sort of watch for it if someone doesn't seem like he's that same sense of community that Julia Sheehan told us about in the segment before you. Yeah, I, these, are, these are great identifiers, the tattoos that you're talking about. I would, I would say, Ashley, that most of the hikers on the trail don't hike the trail end to end. They hike little segments of the trail, one day, two day, three day, four day uh, hikes. So whoever's hiking the trail right now, particularly this time of year, is, has been exposed to the media. Now, there may be a culture there that they, you know, they just kind of pass people by and don't, don't uh, or they're just not media watchers and, and they don't bother people on the trail. But I don't, I, I think this, this is the exception. He is well known. His photo is everywhere. You don't, you know, you don't have to watch the mainstream media. It's all over every possible social media, every form of media. So I, I think he would be running a huge risk if he were in fact on the trail. Secondly, he, he needs to go indoors. It, it is going to get bitter up there. I mean, the, the, the uh, wind chill factor up in the, in the mountains of North Carolina will get below zero. And I just don't know if there's a lot of shelter up there where he could shelter by himself. So I, I'm, again, I'm not discounting it. It's very possible that he's up there, but I'm a little bit skeptical of, of the source of information here. So I'll tell you what, I, I have only um, uh, about a minute left, but this is important because in the search for the Danamora escapees in upstate New York, um, uh, yes. they were breaking into cabins and they were stealing food and staying in people's cabins. And the police said, hey, if you have a cabin, go check and see if it's been messed with. Do you think people should be checking their cabins for uh, Brian Laundrie? And again, I just have about, uh, about 45 seconds left. Yeah, the short answer is yes, because he will have to get inside. If he's on the trail, I just don't think he can stay outdoors with the weather coming up. It's fall. It's, it's actually late fall now, and it's really cold up there. He can't stay outdoors, particularly if, if uh, his sister is correct, that he's mediocre outdoorsman. Mediocre at best. Um, Christopher Swecker, thank you so much. Uh, I, I think we're going to have to call on you again just to see if there's anything else. I'm interested that you said the sheriffs aren't uh, super excited about that one tip, but maybe that if they listen to what the parents have all said about his penchant for that trail, it might make a difference. Thank you for your insights, sir, and thank you for your work in finding Eric Rudolph, too.
Thank, thank you, Ashley. I appreciate it.